Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel, and it is official, hell has frozen over. Proof? I have finally claimed my spark tokens. Have you done it? I have finally, I finally did it today. And so, um, part of this, this is going to be a public service announcement here. Uh, because, just so you know, you have eight days remaining to claim your spark tokens if you have an eligible... XRP address and you wish to do so you have eight days although really it's more like just about seven because at least at the time I'm recording this yeah it's June 3rd but uh, it's it's almost midnight frankly not too far off anyway and the deadline is June 11th and I, I tell you what if, if I if I wanted to claim my spark tokens and I'd not yet done so I would not attempt to do so on June 11th I would do it prior to that which I have I actually have done it prior to that so go me so um, I actually got a whole lot more questions about this than um, I was anticipating when I tweeted out that I did this earlier today. Over 100 comments, 472 likes, a bunch of retweets, all that jazz. So I thought I'd address some of this because it became clear to me that there are a lot of people in the XRP community that are, are not, um, not clear on whether or not they can get the Spark token, and if so, how to go about doing that. And uh, largely understandable, uh, especially since a lot of the people... Uh, that were asking, pre presumably, and not all of them, but I think a, a lot of them were uh, perhaps newer to crypto and newer to XRP, so you might not have been around when this was widely talked about uh, in, in the third and fourth quarters of, of last year. So uh, plenty to talk about, but I, I do want to be clear that I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. Uh, and so here's the tweet I put out earlier today. Guess what? I finally claimed my Spark tokens today. Public service announcement. Eligible XRP accounts still have eight days from now to claim their free Spark tokens if they've not yet done so. And so I want to make sure we're all caught up uh, to speed here, all on the same page. If you owned XRP before December 11th of last year, 2020, then you were entitled to free Spark tokens as an airdrop, uh, which would be airdropped to you from Flare Network. Now, th the snapshot date it was either on December 11th or December 12th, depending what part of the world you're on. It may have been touted typically as December 12th. I can't remember. It was one of those dates. But um, because of the difference in time zones, for some people it was on the 11th, for some people it was on the 12th. But anyway, if you see different dates, that's the reason why. Just try and clear up a little potential confusion there. And so if you had your, your, your XRP on a participating exchange at the time that the, the snapshot was, it was taken, there was a, because to be clear, I shouldn't need to explain what that is too. A, the, uh, the state of the XRP ledger, given that the XRP ledger is public, the state of the XRP ledger was recorded and they're calling that a snapshot. So it was recorded on the D December 11th or 12th, depending on your time zone. Uh, by Flare Network, they, they basically just took a, a, a moment in time snapshot of the ledger. And if, if you had your XRP on a cryptocurrency exchange that decided they were going to support the, 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 the Spark token airdrop, you, uh, for, for, by and large, didn't have to do anything. There could be some cryptocurrency exchanges I'm aware of where you did have to take uh, action. But for example, if you had your XRP on Coinbase at the time of the, the snapshot, you don't have to do anything. Um, you still don't have your Spark token yet because the token's not yet been released, but uh, that will be distributed to you as soon as it's available. And and uh, Coinbase is actually taking care of all the behind-the-scenes work, so you don't have to worry about doing anything, frankly. Now, for anybody else that had their their cryptocurrency, their XRP on an exchange that was not supporting the Spark token, if that's where your XRP was sitting during the snapshot, unfortunately, you're out of luck and you cannot claim the Spark token. Um, and also, if you purchased XRP after the snapshot date, uh, you also are not eligible for, for the Spark token. So, so here's the thing, though. <clears throat> if you had your XRP in your own cold storage wallet, like on a Ledger Nano S, which is what I did, because I, I have multiple XRP accounts, um, you can actually claim your Spark token up until June 11th this year, 2021. So you've had quite a bit of time, which means that I have perhaps procrastinated just a little baby boo bit. And I acknowledge that. And, uh, and there is a reason for that, actually. Uh, the reason for that is 
I'm kind of terrified to do anything with crypto because <laughs> I know it's it's just like I understand everything's fine. I know to move cryptocurrency around. I've done it plenty. That it, it I don't ever feel safer doing it, especially as it becomes worth more. And I, it, like in this case, you have to make a change to your actual account. And I'll steer you in the direction if you're wondering how to do all this. Don't worry, I'm gonna uh, send you to, uh, directionally where where to go if you're curious. Um, but anytime you have to make these types of changes, I just get a little bit nervous, a little bit panicky, and you can make fun of me for that, that's fine, but that's how I am. And so I knew it would all be fine, but I still was just kind of like dreading doing that. It's because of the what if. What if I do get tricked? What if, what if there is a successful phishing attempt against me, and I really can't tell it, and I type something in wrong, and even me trying to be careful, and I, I fall victim, it's just the what if. However unlikely, it's just the what if. And so I was like, I don't want to deal with this, so I just basically didn't deal with it until now. But given that I had my XRP in my own cold storage wallet, um, I, I had the right to go ahead and claim it again up until June 11th. And so I finally started moving on this within the last few days and completed it today. And it was interesting because I, I, I plugged in my, uh, my, my very first Ledger Nano S ever. And it was interesting. This is back in late 2017. And you plug the damn thing in and it doesn't say that I have an XRP account. No, no, no. It says I have a Ripple account. And so R Ripple, the company, and XRP, the decentralized cryptocurrency, those two things, they're conflated today. But at this point, if they're conflated, it's mostly because uh, it's intentional. It's be like a Bitcoin Maximus or something like that that just intentionally wants to uh, conflate the two. And uh, back in 2017, it was it was all mainstream media, crypto media, all sorts of people. Everybody was conflating, not recognizing the difference between Ripple and XRP. And so Ripple, uh, the company, like that's they, that's what XRP was known as, just Ripple. Unfortunately, not it wasn't accurate to that. That that, that isn't what it was. That's just what people were calling it. And so I just kind of plugged the damn thing. I'm like, oh, there we go. Well, let me let me just move my Ripple coins around. No. <laughs> It's like, damn it. Uh, but that's because, you know, if you use a new version of, of Ledger Nano S, though, of course, with the latest firmware and software, yeah, it's, it, it, it is called XRP now, but it's just kind of funny plugging the damn thing in. And so I've got the old ancient software with my Ledger Ripple wallet on my old, my old, old laptop with the old, old software. And so um, I didn't even want to try to update the firmware or this or that or anything to interface with XRP Toolkit, which is what you need to do if you want to claim the Spark token. I mean, there are other ways. This is the way that I would recommend doing it anyway. And so I was like, I ain't even going to mess with that. But here's the directions. I am going to link this below, by the way. I'm going to link this below. Um, but if you want to know how to, to claim this, you can go to this page, uh, XRP Toolkit's official website. Th th this is this will walk you through how to do it. Um, also, and I found this very helpful. Uh, here is uh, an XRP YouTube channel. Uh, the channel name is XRP Dev. V -E, I'm sorry, D E V. And XRP Dev made a video a few weeks ago, which I watched, and I found it to be rather helpful. And anytime somebody's contributing in some sort of meaningful way with the XRP community, I want to go ahead and prop them up. And so this is a new YouTube channel, as far as I can tell. It looks like their first video ever was just about two months ago. And uh, I, I was their 41st subscriber. I just subscribed today. And so I thought I'd go ahead and give a shout out because I'll tell you what, I remember starting out my channel. It's hard to get traction. So if you, if you find his information helpful and you want to spread some XRP love, consider subscribing to XRP Dev. Now in this video, which, and I'll, I'll put the link in, this, uh, in the details below in my video, I will link to this. It's titled, How to Claim Your Spark Tokens, XRP slash FLR. Uh, I will say the video, the, the, uh, the video's audio was very soft. So you're gonna have to crank that mofo up, but the data within it is, uh, is, is easy to follow. It's a short video, less than five minutes. So if you want to know how to claim your Spark Tokens, I'm not gonna run through it in this video. I just wanted to steer anybody that's still interested in learning how to do that down the right path. Uh, and it is not yet too late, at least at the time of recording this. You got about another week here. Um, but it, it was, it, it really wasn't too bad. And so as, as far as, um, you know, like, and I do, I do want to share this with you. I, I did have a concern and it's not that it necessarily, like there was cause for alarm. There wasn't. But, but here's the deal. I knew, I knew, and I, so I, I decided what I was going to do back in like November <laughs> because in, in order to go this route, which is pretty much what everybody did that I'm aware of anyway, everybody used the XRP toolkit, very trustworthy. There's not a, an ounce of doubt in anybody's mind. I trust it. Everybody trusts it. Just to be super duper clear, it's fantastic. I used it today. Very easy to use. 
But I, I was worried not about XRP Toolkit itself, but what 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 if there was a phishing attempt? And like, say I type something in, and I'm even if I'm trying to be super careful, and who, who knows what could happen? And then I actually um, plug my ledger into it. Like, what if? And I understand using the ledger, you have to use the hardware wallet to approve transactions and, and actually sign for them. I get that too. Trust me, I understand all of this. And so it concerned me. And so out of an abundance of caution, I made a move as an extra layer of security for myself that I haven't heard of anybody else doing, and I don't think anybody needs to do it, but it's just extreme caution. Like, for me, it was a just in case I'm getting tricked type of thing. So what did I do? Well, because here's the thing, in order to claim your Spark token, you have to you have to get into XRP Toolkit, and then you, you have to um, put a, a note in this message key line once you're logged in, and what you put is a note in the message key line is uh, an Ethereum address. So you do have to have an Ethereum address also. You, you don't have to purchase Ethereum, but uh, you need to have an address. You can create one with your Ledger Nano S if that's what you're using. And there are other ways to do it as well. But once you have created an, an address, it can just be completely empty. You plug that in there. But in order to do that, you do have to sign in using your XRP Ledger uh, with your account that has all of your XRP in it, right? And so I thought, well, what if something went terribly wrong? What if some, somehow unforeseen, I don't even know what this would look like. What if a hacker actually got a hold of my account? That would be devastating after I've been holding, I've been holding now for three and a half years. I've never sold a single XRP. That would just be an all for an airdrop. And so it just was, it was admittedly just something in the back of my mind that I never thought was likely. And, uh, but, but it still concerned me. And so here's what I did. The snapshot already happened. So once the snapshot happened with, with my XRP addresses, what you do with your XRP afterwards doesn't matter. You're still allowed to claim the Spark token. So what I did over the last few days is I've been moving my XRP from the accounts that are eligible for the Spark token. I drained them except for the 20 XRP reserve, which is required to, to stay there per the, the code of the XRP. So the 20 XRP is still in those accounts. Other than that, I drained them. And, uh, and so I had these empty accounts and so I thought, okay, now I'm gonna log in. And even if a hacker gets a hold of my account, all they're gonna have is my empty XRP account. And so then true enough, I, I you know, they, they could hijack my, uh, my Spark token, but at least they wouldn't have my, you know, my Star Spark token, the messaging airdrop, all that. But I was like, even if that happened, at least they wouldn't have my XRP. So that's, that's the way that I was looking at it. So I was just like, it's an extra layer of security, probably completely unnecessary. I acknowledge that. But I just felt better doing that. So if you want an extra layer of security for yourself, you can try doing that too. Um, it's really completely unnecessary. I think just about anybody would tell you that. But I felt way better knowing that if something went horrifically wrong, nobody would have my XRP because I set up a, I set up brand new XRP addresses <clears throat> Excuse me. over the last few days. I moved all my XRP out. And then the old empty accounts, uh, which were eligible for the Spark token, that's where I plugged in the message key. So, uh, so, so that's the way I looked at it. I know it's 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 overkill, and you guys, some of you out there, are probably chuckling at me. And fine, fair enough. <laughs> you can make fun of me all you want, but I felt safe, and I, I everything's claimed now, and it was super duper easy to do. Um, like like really, and it's like if if you're not going to worry about that, I mean, it does not take long. You can just you can have this done in a matter of minutes, frankly. You, so if you want to claim your Spark token, you can certainly do it. Just be really careful and just be diligent when you're signing for a transaction on your, if you're using like a Ledger Nano S like I did, for example. Example, just, just make sure that you're you're looking at what's on the screen so that you're not approving a transaction that is something other than uh, what, you, what you you think it is. Because if, if what you're seeing on your hardware device doesn't match up with what it says is happening on the screen, you got a problem. So just be aware of that. There's a reason for that extra layer of security there. But uh, I'm glad to, I'm just waiting for this thing to drop. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen. I still haven't seen any specific dates for when this is going to drop. It's, it's allegedly happening soon, so I look forward to the airdrop. I do know that it's going to be dropped over a span of <clears throat> uh, th three years, roughly. So we're not going to get all of our spoke, spark tokens at once, but whatever, that's that's fine. Not exactly the end of the world. I, I, I will take free at whatever pace they will allot, allot the free to me. So <laughs> that's the way that I'm looking at here. But, uh, but again, I, I do encourage you to check out XRP Dev. Just type in XRP Dev, and, uh, or you don't have to. I, I, I forget. I'll, I'll, I'll link below. But, uh, but yeah, ch check this out. And like I said, if, if you do like, if you think he's helpful, consider subscribing to him. I thought he did a good job anyway, and it was helpful to me. 
And, um, and also, again, I will also link to uh, this page. It's the XRP Toolkits page. If you just want to read through, these are all of the uh, directions. And uh, like anytime I'm doing anything with like moving around XRP or setting a message key, stuff like this, I am super diligent. Like I, I read through this like infinity times, basically. And then I was like, okay, now I'll move. And I watched multiple videos. And there are a lot of other videos. Oh, I'll mention this too. There are a lot of other YouTube videos out there that do cover this. Uh, the, one of the reasons that I'm pointing you to this particular um, YouTuber, XRP Dev, uh, is because all the, the other videos from the past, they're fine. But a lot of them from like August, September, October, um, they did fine jobs covering the material. But XRP Toolkit's interface actually changed. And so if you want to follow along with a video that has the latest interface you can like graphically see what he's doing and it matches up with what's on your screen uh i would recommend this because this video is from three weeks ago and it is like what he showed on his ex his screen is exactly what showed up on on my screen um and also i will note that he used the sum wallet app um i i did not and it doesn't matter you'll see once you get in if you're going to claim you'll see you'll see exactly why as you start going through it it, it functionally doesn't matter whether you use a sum wallet app or use your ledger nano s it doesn't matter the, the rest of the steps are 100% the same. So you'll see once again, there's not a problem. Don't be afraid if you if you're using if you're not using some wall app, if you're using Ledger Nano S, don't worry about it. It's still a good video for you. But um, I will go ahead and uh, and wrap up there. Let me know if this was helpful at all. Even though I didn't tell you how to claim the Spark token, at least if you needed to be steered in the right direction, let me know if you're claiming your Spark token. Have you been intimidated to by? Did, did this make you feel any better? <laughs> Are you going to claim your Spark tokens? Um, I feel great about it now. Now that's all done, everything's safe. Oh, and um, and also you can see if you go to xrpscan.com, you can put in your um, just type in xrpscan.com. Uh, you can punch in your um, XRP address there, uh, and and you can see if your if your account's eligible for it. I should have pulled that up for this video. I'm not going to worry about it now because I'm wrapping up. But um, it'll tell you if your account's eligible to receive the the Spark Token airdrop or not. Once you've completed it, you will actually be able to see it on xrpscan.com. It's just a public facing address, and uh, same for Bithomp. B i t h o m p. Once you have signed. Uh, uh, you, you put the message key, uh, like it, it'll tell you your most recent transaction will show that a uh, flare is now uh, recognized. You can really use either of those websites. Uh, and, and you can also see it on XRP Toolkit after you've done it as well. So there's three places that you can look uh, to verify that you've successfully uh, set up your, your account to receive your Spark Token airdrop. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time. To the moon, Nambo.